Soccer players face one of the highest risks of sustaining traumatic brain injuries. The sport is second only to football. Up. Researchers at Sensei Children's have been studying ways to protect athletes from injuries. Boys in area high school athletics have been part of a study using an experimental neck device. Now, researchers are expanding the study to include girls who play soccer. Girls soccer was chosen because we know that they have one of the highest rates of injury and in particular uh, concussion injury. Seton High School on Cincinnati's west side was the first soccer team chosen to wear a device called a Q collar. We were a little nervous at first because we didn't know what they were going to be like or how they felt, but now we're completely used to them and we don't really notice them at all. So what the collar is designed to do is to put a specific pressure on the jugular vein and what that's doing is putting a, a small kink in the, the hose, you might say, or the blood leaving the brain. So the carotid keeps pushing blood up at the same rate, we're slowing it down as it, as it leaves and what that does is creates an immediate backfill in the brain, we're filling up that free expandable space so the brain is less likely to move when it's exposed to a head impact. This particular study focused heavily on subconcussive impacts or smaller blows to the head. We really focused on that, that total load or how much the brain is exposed to head movement or sloshing in, inside. The study also included players from a different girls soccer team who did not wear the collar. Players from both teams wore an accelerometer, a computer chip behind the ear which tracked every hit sustained during practice and games. Girls from both teams also participated in neuroimaging, so researchers could then analyze the data. What we look at is uh, does that, that structure change from a pre, pre to post type season situation. After reviewing data from a nine month period, the results for players wearing the collar were promising. When the athletes were exposed to head impacts and uh, playing sport, we saw that the collar prevented those uh, microstructural changes in the brain from pre to post season. This animation shows the changes in the brain from two different soccer teams. On the left, the gold color reflects all the changes in brain structure for the team that didn't wear the collar. As you can see, there's a considerable difference compared to the team on the right who wore the collar and saw very little change. The good news is what we're measuring, it's tracking back to normal. So after a three month period of, of, of no head impact exposure, the girls' brains tracked back to normal. More research is already underway with studies continuing in both boys and girls sports. These female soccer players were glad to help get the ball rolling. It's nice to be able to be part of such a big study that can make such a huge impact on both girls and boys. Be able to say like, hey, like I was a part of the study that helped with that. Kids' brains are never as safe as they've been, so we need to keep kids in sports, and that's the big message we have to take away from this.